Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Borderlands Game of the Year edition, otherwise known as Borderlands Remastered. Now obviously I'm going to be doing a full let's play of the game here on the channel, but for this video, I wanted to do a first impressions run through, right? Basically just do the opening quest, get the Firestone, see what's up with the game, right? See how things look and how things are and I can already tell you guys, I'm liking all the quality of life improvements. For example, the graphics in the background, absolutely fantastic when we go to the options menu here fov slider by default high resolution all sorts of options i am a huge fan of all the quality of life improvements here let's go to game options we have training messages aim assist we have the compass on by default the mini map on okay we can rotate the mini map as well equip items on hold disable windows key all sorts of nice features man the original game, I mean, just recently, in fact, I went through and did the One Life Challenge. We saw all the little problems that the game had, and just looking at it right now, with the original game being so fresh in my memory, this is freaking insane. I am a huge fan of this. So let's go ahead and select our character, I suppose. Oh, okay, I thought we selected our character right here. Let's go play game. And then we pick the Vault Hunter after the beginning. Of course, of so. course. Oh, wow, check this out, guys. The graphics already look so much freaking better. Even like the introduction scene, <laughs> more kind of flips us off. Even the introduction scene right here where we just pick our character essentially, it's already much better. Now for the let's play, I'm going to be playing as Brick, but for the sake of this video, we're going to be picking Mordecai because Mordecai was my very first character. I need you to stay calm and don't let on that anyone is talking to you. Angel looks incredible. Making your way off the bus. That's really cool. You don't have any reason to trust me. But I need you to believe that I'm here to guide you. I'm here to help you find the book. That's really cool. I like that a lot. You'll be greeted by a funny little robot. Do everything he says. You'll know what I mean when it happens. I'll contact you again soon. Now, I have something I want to point out here, but I'll wait for Marcus to do his thing right now. <laughs> well, we're here. <laughs> Don't worry about saying goodbye. I'm sure we'll be doing this all again soon enough. <laughs> ah, get off my bus. Good old Marcus. So the game itself uh, is not capped at 60 frames per second. The original one was, but this little pre-rendered event here is locked at 30 FPS, which is interesting. I'm wondering like what other instances in this game that they're going to be locking at a certain frame rate because so far like the menus and the introduction scene where we're picking our Vault Hunter and everything, that was all at whatever frame rate your hit your PC can handle. For me personally, I'm running at about 120 Welcome right now. Firestone. I am CL4PTP. You may call me by my locally designated name, Claptrap. Before continuing, please accept this echo communication device and heads up display. Provided free of charge by the Doll Corporation. You know, I never thought about that until right now. That's kind of odd that Claptrap is a Hyperion robot. And he's giving us a sets up display, which is made by Doll. And he's talking, like, very highly of the Doll Corporation. Almost as if he, like, works for them or he's associated with them somehow. But look at the heads up display, guys. Even little things like the health bar and the ammo count and the mini-map. We finally have a mini-map. This way, please. Well, excuse you, Claptrap. I've got places to be here real quick. We're heading over to the Firestone Motel. I don't know why I'm so irrationally fond of this location. You can't go inside it. You can't really do anything with it besides get on top of it, I suppose. But because it's like the first area you see in the Borderlands franchise, I've always really just enjoyed this spot. That, and of course, you hide behind it when you're fighting Saturn in Borderlands 2. But let's go ahead and just start looting some stuff and running around and just getting a feel for the game. I could say that right now it looks freaking incredible. Like, it looks like updated graphics, but it's still Borderlands, right? It's still the original game. And this is kind of strange. I think in the original game, you could jump up on this part right here to get on top of the roof. But I guess I was able to just to jump up without the assistance. Oh, maybe not. I got there the first time. I'm not sure why I can't do it again. That's definitely pretty strange. But let's go ahead and open up the chest, which the chests themselves look fantastic. And... All right, we got ourselves a violent SMG to start things off. There we go, and a repeater. Okay. Let's get rid of that. 
I guess I could technically turn off those training messages. I was looking around in the menus. There is so much you can do here. So you go to the options here and then go to mouse and keyboard. Look at the different sensitivities you have. You can have scope sensitivity and regular sensitivity and vertical and horizontal and everything essentially. Definitely pretty cool. Same thing with the gamepad. You have these things here with the video and audio as well. Just there's so much to it. There is definitely so much to it. But let's go video. And I guess it wouldn't be under video. Where would it be? Be under game options? It will turn off the training messages for right now. Because they're just annoying. They always pop up at you. But, I mean, just getting a close-up look at the... <laughs> At the Jacob's Barrels here and everything. The game looks freaking fantastic. What about these menus? Here's the big question, guys. Here's the big question. <gasps> we can hover over sniper rifle without having to use the arrow keys. <laughs> Proficiencies are back. Oh, okay. That's a much better system. By default, they give you legendaries. Okay, so these are going to be the new weapons, essentially, that you get for having played the game already. Remember, they added, I think it's six total legendaries to the game. Okay, that's kind of nuts. We have Violence and we have Hive Mind. And they don't have a level requirement. I wonder if they're going to scale with us or not. They're definitely going to make the early game kind of easy. And I wonder, like, should we even use those in the Let's Play? But then again, it's like new content. It's like we haven't beat Borderlands 1 before. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Should we use those weapons in the Let's Play? But here are going to be different screens. Here's going to be the new mission log. And then over here is going to be the map itself. Oh, beautiful. I was going to say, one quality of life improvement that I wish they would add, and they did, is when you hover over the stars to go to these different locations, it'll tell you where you're going. We didn't have that back in the original game. So, like, you saw this exit right here. You're like, where does that take me again? Now we know. That's freaking awesome. Oh, check out this rocket launcher. Okay, now what about the... Okay. These are definitely pretty interesting weapons. Let's go ahead and talk to old Clappy here. And continue on towards Firestone. The graphics, it's... I wonder how it's going to reflect on the video. The graphics, like, for me playing it, things look fantastic. Hyperion New U Station. New U Station. When you use this device, your DNA profile is automatically identified and stored. Please activate the New U Station now. Will do. Now, this is where the customization is going to come to play a little bit. So we can change the head which are there by default. A little bit of customization, right? You have Head Hunter, which I wish we could, like, view this in... I wish this was a 3D model so we can look around. We have They're Listening with a tinfoil... <laughs> He's got a tinfoil hat on. Bright-eyed, okay. Rooster Tail, fine. Road Warrior, and then OG. All right, so I think we're safe, but we're going there listening. And here you can see what uh, how many points we have in certain skills. That's kind of cool. And then here, of course, will be the palette uh, swaps that we had in the original game. This is how my original character looked, minus the headpiece. And then here's the name, and we can't fast travel, at least as of right now. But there we go. There's going to be the new U station. Now that your DNA is registered, you have the best in horrific death and dismemberment insurance. Should an unfortunate fatal incident occur, your new U will appear at the nearest station. All right. We can head into the peaceful town of Firestone. Peaceful, eh? Please, follow me. I can't wait to see Firestone, man. I cannot wait. I mean, Firestone was great in the original game. It's iconic, right? Then you saw it in Borderlands 2, and it's like, oh my gosh, we're back at Firestone. Where it all started. I love, I love throwbacks like that and callbacks. They're so good. And now, we're about to see Firestone yet again. Almost 10 years after we initially saw it. Completely remastered. Oh, very excited, guys. Very excited. I was hoping to be able to blow him up right there, but I don't think we can actually attack him. Are, are they gone? I think they are, Clappy. I feel like the music right now is super loud. I may have to adjust that for the actual Let's Play itself. I feel like the music's, like, really loud compared to, like, Claptrap, you know? All right, let's see. Uh, there we go. I only got one shot left in this thing. Oh, but we made it count. Now let's go rocket launcher. Come here, bandit thug. I'd like a word. Okay, fires three shots at once. Those were not me. That, that, that was an overkill by me. That was just the rocket launcher itself. Let's go ahead and loot these over here, I guess. Get some money. There we go. 
Now, I wonder if the shift code... We're going to swap us out for a sniper rifle. I wonder if the shift code box, essentially, the secret... The mysterious chest, I think it's actually called. I wonder if that is going to be here inside the Firestone, or if we're going to have to make our way to, like, New Haven. Now, is that new dialogue? That may have been new dialogue right there. Now I have to go back and watch my Let's Play to find out that's new dialogue. It may not be. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll see. All right, go ahead. We still have the original voice for Mordecai here. Wow. <laughs> Again, I can't. I can't overstate how much I love the graphical improvements here. The original game is still fresh in my mind after doing that one life challenge, and my goodness. It's beautiful. It really is. Alright. Going all the way around, are we? We have the barrels here. Very nice looking. But again, like they accomplished oh, <laughs> they accomplished a really awesome goal, which was make the game look good, but still make it have the Exact same art style as the original. The gunplay feels good. Of course, the accuracy of the sniper rifles and stuff, I assume, is still going to be somewhat inaccurate because that's how the game was designed. But man, so far, this has exceeded pretty much every expectation. I start aiming for the head a bit more, but... oh. I wonder if they fix little things like AI. Like, for example, Mordecai's uh, Bloodwing. Bloodwing would not attack unless you were, like, right next to the enemy and you are actually also looking at the enemy. And so I'm wondering if, like, <laughs> is that going to be fixed? Are they going to be changing up things like that? Will the turret be better, maybe? Like, I wonder what other changes... Oh, there's the chest. There's the chest, guys. I guess I have to kill everybody. I'm sitting here focused on the chest that's right here in front of us. But there's a couple things I actually want to check out as well. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool how they how they completely redid Angel. Attention citizen of Firestone! There is no cause for alarm! This new visitor has resolved the problem! Well, shoot. I thought I was a goner that time. Damn bandits won't leave us alone. Had to lock the place up tight. I'll let you in. Come on. Damn it. Blasted circuits are on the fritz again. Give it a go from the switch out there, would you? Can do, will do. So I was wondering if maybe there was going to... Oh, by the way, I wonder if we're going to have to use page up, page down here. But I was wondering if there was going to be extra voice acting in this game. I hope that there is. But, oh, we can't just scroll. We can't press down either. The same problem as before. <laughs> the same problem. So if you want to scroll down, you have to use page up and page down here on PC, which is really weird. It just is. But it's a story mission right there. That's cool. The interface in general is pretty nice. Selected a mission, you will notice that a new icon has appeared on your heads up display. That's a waypoint. The waypoint will tell you where you need to go, depending on what mission is currently active in your mission log. Well, thank you, Claptrap. Oh, Dr. Zed. All high res and everything. <laughs> very cool. Definitely very cool. Up again. The name said they don't let me cut on folks anymore since I lost my license. So now I keep the med vendors around here up and running. From the vendors, you can buy all the healing you could ever want from a real doc. Thankfully, without the fault as a myth, you'll get yourself killed lecture. Notice the uh, the scope graphics. Pretty cool. They had this in the original game as well, but it's really well done right here. All right, let's turn this in. And Sky exit the gate. All right, we can handle that. Let's. Uh, oh, we can't. We can't activate this at least as of right now. Welcome to Pandora. Enter code. That's. Oh, I just realized the uh, scope itself still has the skull on there, which is kind of neat. I'll follow you in just a second, Cloud Trap. There's something I need to attend to first, and I need to find out if that Cloud Trap robot is still up here. They still have the arrow. He's still there. He's still there. Oh, that's so cool. 
I'm so glad they brought him back. Now, I have to wonder, though. Yeah, they still got the barriers, but I wonder if things like grenade mods... Or I'm sorry, grenade jumping without grenade mods and stuff. I wonder if that's going to be working. Oh, I have so many questions. We're also going to open up that chest a couple of times as well. We're going to see what's in there. Uh, I have 75 golden keys because I've already played Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel. And if you've already played those games on your account, then you get, like, seniority. Kind of like a, kind of like a bonus, I guess, for having... Uh, I guess it's loyalty rewards. I think that's what it's called. I call it seniority. I couldn't think of the phrase, but uh, loyalty rewards, essentially, for having played the other games. So if you play Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel, you get 75 golden keys here for the remaster, which is really cool. And I would imagine it's going to be best to save those up. <laughs> oh, look at that headshot. It might be best to save those up. I don't know. Or it might be best to use them as you level up to kind of like make it easier to get through the leveling. Will he, though? All right, let's swap back here real quick to that pistol, because I imagine I grabbed some ammo for it. I knew you were the right choice. Bro, the poor little robot needs our help. Would you kindly give him a hand? Will do. My His servos are seizing. Oh, we just kind of help him. The robot is hurt. He isn't going to last very long without attention. Why don't you look around for something to fix him up? All right, we'll head on over here. Man, the quality of life improvements, like, I'm so happy about this, man. People are going to be able to experience the original game in the modern day. Because there's going to be so many people, I'm sure, that did not play the game, right, way back when. Maybe they start off with Borderlands 2, like a lot of us did. And now they're going to go back to this game, and they've got six months between now and Borderlands 3. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Now is the time to get moving and play your part in the journey to come. Alright, now we just have to kill a couple of skags. We're going to do that real quick here with our brand new pistol. Now, I have the field of view up pretty high right now. I think it's at, one, uh, at 110. 120 seemed a little bit too high. I don't know. I might mess around with it more. In Borderlands 2, I always played at 96. Of all numbers, 96 was my number. Well, thank you, Dr. Zed. Um... But 95 seems like not good enough. Like right here, we're at like 110, right? I believe we're at 110. We're going to go to video. Yeah, so we dropped that down to 95, which is close to what I always played on. I don't know. It seems like a little bit too close to me for some reason. I don't know. We'll mess around with it. We'll, we'll play like this for a little bit, I guess. But let's continue on forward here. Go talk to old Dr. Zed. I'm not making this a let's play, I promise. I'm just trying to get to the initial parts here. Uh, power coupling. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. And the reason why we're doing that is because I want to open up, like, the vending machine and stuff like that. I want to see what the user interface is like for those different things. But, man, this game looks freaking fantastic. I am a huge fan of this. This is awesome. But going back to it, I mean, so many people have started off with Borderlands 2. And rightly so. Borderlands 2 is a fantastic game. And pretty much, you know, it's worthy of all the praise that, that it's received over the years, right? But, I mean, the original Borderlands is a very dated game. And a lot of people probably didn't play it, or if they did try to go back and play it after maybe experiencing 2, maybe they didn't want to stay playing that game, you know? Maybe they thought to themselves, hmm, I'd rather just stick with 2 because this game is really old and it's pretty rough around the edges. Well, now it's better, right? And people can experience the original story. The final boss is apparently revamped and better. This is good. I am a huge fan of this, man. Let's go ahead and play. Oh, we got popped in right there. And then... Calm down there. Okay. I like the new interface. This is pretty cool. So they put the item of the day right here as compared to over here. And then you can actually see the item you're going to look at right here. The new interface is sick. We had to purchase a shield. We'll go ahead. Oh, can't afford it. Apparently too poor. Go ahead and buy that, I guess. And now if we're looking to sell items and stuff, there we go. And of course, buyback is going to be there as well. Very cool. Go ahead and turn that in. Oh, got an achievement up there. Okay, they want us to go kill uh, bandits. So we're not going to bother with that right now. If you're going to ever find the vault, you'll need the aid of the people. Helping Dr. Zed with his nine toes problem is a good move. Well, I tend to make good moves. But yeah, now we've got that out of the way. I want to see the interface for that. We're not going to be able to open up uh, Marcus's shop right here. But we'll do that in the actual Let's Play. This is just like first impressions. Let's go ahead and check this out. Using this chest will spend one of your golden keys. This cannot be undone. Are you sure you want to use a golden key to open this chest? Sure. 
Now, what do we have here? Okay, we got some blues. So they're giving us a couple, uh, a glorious havoc, and then a shattering mauler here. And I love the fact that they kept the old school, like plus whatever damage, plus whatever fire rate. Like it's gonna be pretty much the same weapons that we saw in the original game, which is really cool. Definitely a fan of that. Go ahead and pick this up and just look at the guns. The gunplay is gonna be tighter. It's going to be better. The Interface is awesome. I am a huge fan of this, guys. I am a huge fan, but unfortunately, because we don't have grenade mods or anything right now, I can't really uh, run around and try to do grenade jumping or anything. I can maybe run around looking for a grenade, but I think we're actually going to have to do some missions to unlock that in the first place. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Borderlands Remaster, otherwise known as Game of the Year Edition. I don't know why they don't just call it the Remaster. That's what everybody else is calling it. But regardless, the game is here. It looks wonderful. It is very smooth. And it has all the quality of life improvements that we were hoping for. So definitely, definitely happy, man. This is incredible. This is exactly what we were hoping for. And I'd love to hear what you guys think down there in the comments. Have you guys played the game so far? Are you enjoying the game? What are your first impressions? And have you guys ever even played the original game? Because if you haven't, this is, now is the time, right? Now is the time. The remaster's out. We have, oh, I'm trying to get on top of here. Oh, it's like knocking me off. I wonder if they added like additional barriers and stuff, maybe. I mean, I guess that's a possibility, but I doubt they did. Huh. By the way, I mean, there's no better time to play this game. We have six months until Borderlands 3. It's completely redone. I can't wait, man. It's going to be a fun Let's Play. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop me a rating. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Hold on, wait up a second, ladies and gentlemen, the video is not quite finished yet, so something I did not notice when I first booted up the game is you can actually import your character if you've already played the original game. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work if you're playing on the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4, but at least here on PC, if you already owned Borderlands 1 initially, like the original game, you can import your characters over. Like, here's the character I did my Let's Play of, and there it is. It's been imported, and now I can play as that character. Same with my One Life Challenge character. That is so freaking cool. That is so freaking cool. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop me a rating, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.